Welcome to Try Not to Overthink It, where we explore the intricate landscape of mental health, well-being, and everyday life. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. Join us as we dive into insightful conversations, share expert perspectives, and personal stories that shed light on the various dimensions of mental wellness. Rather, you're seeking guidance, inspiration, or a deeper understanding of the human mind, this podcast is your safe space to engage, learn, and navigate the journey to a happier, healthier self. If you're new to the channel, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button so that you will not miss the topics that we talk about every week. So today we are speaking on the subject of forgiveness. This is a topic that I find as a, as a provider to be a very um, humorous one. Why humorous, is it humorous? It's humorous because I feel like we... It's one of those things that we talk about that you see in social media a lot nowadays, mm -hmm. where everyone talks about forgiveness and forgiveness and forgiveness and forgiveness and forgiveness. But people don't, it's, it, you know, as we've seen with a lot of terms that have become social media famous, um, people mm -hmm. don't delve into and unpack the topic fully. They talk about surface level things. It's cute mm -hmm. to extend grace and mercy to people. But they don't they don't talk about the work that goes into getting to that point to where you can extend grace and mercy to people. Um, it's cute to say, oh, I forgive you and you, you're just absolved for whatever you did to me. But don't bother to dig down deep into how you got to that point. People don't not, just. That's not forgiveness. That, that it's not. It's called delusional dumbness. Yes. And and for for me, that's where, like I said, that's what makes it humorous to me is the fact that you have a lot of people who speak on forgiveness and grace and all these different things, but then they don't bother to unpack it. And so people who don't know any better and don't understand the context of the conversation any deeper than what they're seeing on social media when you're just scrolling, um, they just think that you should just enter into forgiveness blindly. Um, now, for me and as that, a provider, some I think entitled. some people think they are entitled to forgiveness, right? I explain mm -hmm. to my clients like this, for the people who believe they are entitled, it's as if they're stepping on my toe and looking for me to say sorry. Mm -hmm. to them. Absolutely. No, that that's forgive. That's entitled forgiveness that, well, I didn't mean it, but you did it. Exactly. And I mean, for me. I think that it's important that people understand what forgiveness is and what that really means. Mm -hmm. It means letting go of the anger. It means letting go of the resentment. It means letting go of the desire for revenge to the person that you are forgiving. When mm -hmm. you forgive somebody, that means you don't get to bring it up later when it's convenient for you. Mm -hmm. Because you'll have people where, you know, like I watch the country Wayne skits a lot. And so you'll have somebody cheat on somebody or somebody do something they, they weren't, they were, they shouldn't have been doing. And so like, prime example like right now you like jay jay and ernestine two of the characters they're married ernestine cheated first you know went through this whole thing jay took her back when she had cancer helped her get through that mm. he cheated and then she's forgiven him but every chance she gets she brings up the fact that he cheated and it's like there's no point in forgiving someone and saying that you're trying to move past it if you're going to bring it back up and throw it in their face Perfect. when it's convenient for you right that is that is no longer that is not forgiveness. That and is having, that is. Well, I think having having the same emotional attachment to it, because it's one thing to say, you know, this happened, and mm -hmm. wow, like that was crazy, right? It's another thing to still have those same feelings. You did me dirty, and because now that that's holding resentment, right? Mm -hmm. Um. I, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into the definition too, right? It, it is letting mm -hmm. go of the hurt. A lot of times people say, oh, but they never asked for forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't require participation from the offender. Forgiveness is for the person that was hurt. That's you making a conscious decision to get over the pain that was caused to you. And no Absolutely. longer being trapped, going from victim to survivor that that happened to me but it, that does not define me right and I, i'm reading this um worksheet from a something that we use as therapists a lot of times to give our clients worksheets and on the worksheet it says that forgiveness is treating the offender with compassion even though they are not entitled to it because i hear so mm -hmm. many times they don't deserve my forgiveness you're 100 percent correct Nobody deserves forgiveness. That's the choice of the person who was offended. You have mm -hmm. to choose 
am I willing to continue to allow the hurt or the offense to control how I live my life? For most people, the answer to that is a resounding no. I am not willing to allow whatever was done to me to control how I operate in life. And so if you don't want to do that, that's forgiveness, right? It takes it a step further by saying, you know what? This person, for whatever reason, they did whatever they did. You know, they ain't either they don't they ain't got it all together, you know, they are just evil. That's still compassion, acknowledging somebody's capacity for where they are. They don't even have the capacity to be good. So me expecting good from them, pff, crazy. That was crazy on my part. Because they they bad, always been bad, always gonna be bad if they don't mm-hmm. decide to change. That's still a compassionate lens looking at a person from where they are. So I think it's just it's important to define forgiveness and then also to talk about what it's not. It's not reconciliation and it's not giving a person a pass to come back in your life. It is not saying what you did was okay and and I agree with it. It is not excusing that person's behavior. Oh, they didn't know no better. People do what they know. So if you're doing mm-hmm. something, then you know what you're doing. You may not Absolutely. understand the there full were choices context, made. but you know, if a kid slaps you in the face, they knew that they were hitting you. Mm-hmm. Now, do they understand the magnitude of that behavior? Probably not, but they knew they were hitting you. They, they were attempting to gather some form of attention. So anyone who does something to you, they knew what they were doing. So you can't excuse that behavior. Graining leniency or legal mercy. People do things and they have to suffer consequences. Not allowing someone to not suffer the consequence is it's dangerous, man. That's not forgiveness. That That's where we talk about grace, right? And not allowing somebody or mercy, not allowing someone to feel the, the weight of their consequence. But that's not forgiveness, okay? Letting go, but wishing for revenge. If you are wishing for revenge, then you have not forgave that person. If you are that's looking true. to get back and hoping that you know what? I hope they get what's coming to them or just saying, you know, I hope karma catch up to them. All of that is not forgiveness. When you forgive somebody, you, hey, look, I, I hope they live the best life possible. I hope the, whatever seed that they, they put out, I hope they're able to reap a harvest. If they're putting out bad seeds, you already know they're going to reap a bad harvest. I don't need to wish that on you. That's just how life works. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think that what people have to understand is forgiveness is an ongoing process as well. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you just wake up and because it's eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning or nine o'clock in the morning, I'm going to forgive somebody. Typically, it's something that you come to over a period of time. It is a, an ongoing healing process. The same way that you break you break your arm or you break your leg. It doesn't just instantaneously heal. It needs time to, you know, your body needs time to recuperate and revitalize itself. Your mm-hmm. emotions and your feelings need the same. They need the same thing. They mm-hmm. need time. Mm-hmm. They need space. They mm-hmm. need effort. They need energy in order to recoup and to revitalize. Mm-hmm. I think that for a lot of us, what we tend to do is, and I see this a lot, especially in regards to adults, where we as adults, we rush to forgiveness because we want to, we prioritize the relationship more so than we prioritize our individual selves. And Mm. we will recognize that certain maladaptive behaviors are not appropriate for someone like, you know, I always look at it like this right here because you hear people talk about being the bigger person. If you find yourself always having to be the bigger person, you might need to stop hanging out with people that are smaller than you. Mm -hmm. For a lot of us, we will always be the bigger person and allow because people, you teach people how to treat you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I am a person that I am quick to extend forgiveness, but I'm slow to forget anything. I I am a person that you only, I will, I only need in the words of Maya Angelou, when a person reveals themselves to be who they are, believe them. So when a person reveals themselves to, you know, because as Unique said, sometimes people do things and don't truly understand the magnitude of whatever it is they said or the magnitude of whatever it is they, they did. So that is where you have to person by person, case by case, uh, use discernment to recognize, is this person 
you know, truly, truly, you know, repentant of whatever it is they said or whatever it is they did. You know, it's, it's for you to use that discernment because God gives us all discernment. So it's on you to kind of, you know, cipher through, you know, decipher through, you know, if this person is, is truly repentant for what they did or they just giving you lip service because mm -hmm. words are, words mean nothing when they're not met with actions. When you are truly repentant and you are truly sorry for whatever it is you said or whatever it is that you did, your actions will match the words. Your actions will supersede the words, as a matter of fact. So you, you, will, you, you you've entered in a whole new word, though. That's repentance. Forgiveness mm -hmm. and repentance are two totally separate things. Mm -hmm. Repentance is when the offender mm -hmm. comes to the person who was offended and says, you know what? I was a pile of crap. And I did that to you. And I see and I how have. it affects you. Yep. Right? Sometimes you feel like you should have. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I ain't going to hold you. Okay? I've done things and I felt justified in my behavior. But mm -hmm. I see that it hurt somebody else. And I yep. said, oh. While I, while I am not sorry for what I did. I'm sorry for how I it made you feel. I am sorry for how it made you feel. Or that how it impacted you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but that, that there is me asking for repentance and recognizing there was wrongdoing there, mm -hmm. but whether and I give that or not, whether I ask for that or not, the person who was hurt chooses to say, you know what, that unique is something else, mm -hmm. but I, I'm going to go ahead on. I ain't yeah. gonna let her nasty words or her sharp tone affect me. I'm gonna keep going. Now I might not deal with her crazy behind no more, you know, cause she don't she don't know how to talk to nobody. So I'm not dealing with her. But I'm gonna I ain't gonna let it ruin my day. Yeah, I mean, and and that's the thing, and that's where, as I said before, you have to at some point in time, and and I've talked about this on previous episodes. Your peace is priceless, and mm -hmm. anything that disrupts your peace cost way too much. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. it. It's outside your price range. And so for me, you know, as a therapist, and I tell people this all the time, things that don't add and multiply in your life, they subtract and divide out of it. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to forgiveness, forgiveness, as Unique said, it's not for the other person. It's for you. It's yep. to free you, you know, because you don't have control over what other people do, but you have control over what you do. Every for time. most of us, every time, mo <laughs> exactly. Every single time for most of us, the mistake that we tend to make is we try to exhibit control over everything else, which is why Ooh. a lot of us will Ooh. throw, <laughs> we'll throw out, we're throwing out, you know, forgiveness, Love, like, it, like it's candy, forgiveness, pardons. And, and it's just like, you know, for me, I'm the type of person, Hey, I don't need you to paint me the portrait more than one time. Once I, once I recognize, okay, that's who you are at that point. Hey, you, 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 you good. Like I'm not a person that's going to hold on to hold on to grudges and go back and forth with you. You got it. You got, as Unique what, says, what, you got what, a big fella. You got a big fella. What George Bush say? Fool me once. Shame on me. I mean, shame, shame on you. Right. Fool, fool me yeah. one time. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Baby, that's shame on me. Cause how you, <laughs> how you get God again? Yeah. And I mean. At if you the get end of the bit day, by a dog once, you learn that that MF got teeth. Yeah. Okay. If you put your hand back in there and that thing clamp down, who fault is it? Not the dogs. I mean, it ain't and the that's, dogs' fault at that point. And and that's the that's one of the misconceptions about forgiveness is that people tend to think that when it comes to forgiving, that means you have to forget. You do not. You, you do not. And you don't have to re-engage. You do not. I mean, because the, the, the thing about not forgetting is if you don't learn from the pain, you don't learn from the hurt, you're dooming yourself to repeat it, right. you know, and, and ultimately, I don't think that's forgiveness. That's not because you're, because not only denying, not, cause you you're have a, denying what that person did. Exactly. And you are, you are setting yourself up to be stuck in that same spot to be put in that same situation again and again and again and again and again. Because again, for some people, some of us, 
you know, as you know, individual human beings, we walk around through the, through this world and we're completely obtuse. <laughs> we're just so obtuse to where we just are unaware of our own actions, our own behaviors for whatever reason stuff happens. Mm-hmm. But, you know, other times that is where you as the person, if someone does something to you that you don't appreciate, that you do not like, that is where you have to educate them. Because again, as I said before, you teach people how to treat you. Yep. Certain people will not know that what they said or what they did was offensive. If mm-hmm. you do not tell them that it was, that it was offensive, they won't mm-hmm. know that you felt some kind of way if you don't tell them. But again, as I said before, you know, when it comes to, you know, extending that forgiveness, it doesn't mean that you have to forget the pain and the hurt that mm-hmm. comes along with it. It doesn't excuse the behavior because there's there, the three most common misconceptions when it comes to forgiveness is you have to forget when a person, when you forgive them, uh, you're, sometimes excusing the behavior when you offer forgiveness to someone and that it means that you reconcile with the person when you forgive them. It Mm -hmm. does not mean any of those three things. Forgiveness, as as Unique alluded to earlier, forgiveness is you lifting it off of yourself. Because again, you know, dwelling in the pain, dwelling in the hurt, dwelling in the disappointment, that weighs on you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. It does. Mm -hmm. When you Mm -hmm. just, you just allow it to fester in you. By Mm -hmm. you forgiving the person, even if you don't physically walk up to them and say, hey, I forgive you. You never have to do that. You You never never have to. to. You can you can do it in your heart and just say, you know what? I forgive that person. And be done with it. Be done with it. I I think right now I have a great example of this right now. Mm -hmm. My phone is cracked like to smithereens on Mm -hmm. the back. Was playing with P, mm-hmm. and th- this is this is a task of forgiveness, right? Me and P having a good time. P like all kids, you start playing with them, they just get buck wild. They got to take playing from like here to level five thousand. You like God dog it. We couldn't just stay at level five, so mm-hmm. knocks the phone out of my hand, cracks the phone, it shatters, and instantly I'm like upset like yo why and and the craziest part was i had just told pete stop it i was like yo you're being too wild stop somebody's gonna get hurt p doesn't listen something get, something ha- happens it breaks i was like yo fun's over so later on during the day i said p come here i said listen i forgive you for the phone um things happen it's it's whatever I'll have to replace it. It's cool. I, so P was just like, whoa, you're not upset? I said, I am upset because my my phone is broken. I am upset that the phone is broken. I'm not upset at you, but I am upset. Was I cuddly and huggy to P after? No. And my husband was just like, babe, I mean, it's not that deep. It was like, it is deep to me. Because now it's something that I have to replace. I said, but more importantly, she needs to understand that when you harm somebody, they may not want to just be all huggy after. Mm -hmm. I can forgive you and and still feel sad or even be hurt by whatever happened. Me forgiving her didn't fix my phone. Mm -hmm. And so she was just like, well, and I don't want to teach her that, that forgiveness just wipes away what just happened because it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So sometimes with forgiveness, we still will bear the scars of whatever happened to us. Now, do I choose to hide my phone because, you know, when I go out, heck no. People like, your phone is cracked. Yeah, it's cracked. (laughs) So it still works. I don't care. It's a phone. I, I don't need it to look good. I need it to be functional. But am I still saying... Am I still going around? Like, oh, my daughter broke it, and I'm so upset at her, and oh, and I'm treating her crazy because she broke my phone. Absolutely not. Do I remind her? Remember the time you broke my phone? Now I don't trust you. No, but I will give her as a lesson and say, P, let's think about how when we're being wild, what can happen? Should we bring up the phone incident? How did you feel after that? Okay, mm-hmm. so we need to calm it down. That's me bringing that up as a reminder for a behavioral correction. It's not me still holding her accountable for anything. Nah, mm-hmm. it's finished. It's over. 
but I can still use it as a an, as a way to learn from that and say, let's change the behavior. Now, the thing that I wanted her to learn was the reconciliation. She had to change her behavior. So for a little bit, I was like, nah, we're not playing like that because you don't understand when I say calm down what that means. And so she's like, well, I had, she had to learn. Okay, when mommy says calm down, that's what that means. It means calm down. It means I'm doing too much. So I had to restrict, I had to restrict access for a little bit, not to me in general, but for playing in those t- in tight spaces, it's like, nah, we can't play in a tight space. You're not ready for that. So now that she's a little older, she understands that and she's demonstrated over time. Hey, I understand what you're meaning by this. Now it's safe to say, okay, yeah, we could do that in this, in this space again, because you've demonstrated an understanding that, hey. What I did before wasn't okay, so I have to change. Yep. Now, now we've established a new playing field. I'm not existing in that same plan. We we got a new playing field because the new playing field understands what what happened here. A lot of and, people want to exist back here. You can't after there's uh-huh. been hurt. You got to exist at a new playing field because there was hurt exactly. There. And I okay. and I think that. I, I think that what what you're speaking to is very important of uh, setting boundaries after there has been a after there has been um, a perceived hurt an offense or perceived yeah. uh, you know an, an an offense. I think that for a lot of us we tend to go back and this is where the resentment comes in. We try to go back and operate in the same space, knowing that that ground is a little shaky there. Mm-hmm. You you have to. Go, you have to, as you said, create a new space to operate in because where you were before, there's damage and there's, there, there's some work that needs to be put in there in order for mm-hmm. us to get back to that point. I think that for, <clears throat> and you see this with, as an example I was using earlier, like with the Country Wayne skit, the characters from the skit, both of them cheated. You tried to hop back into the marriage without addressing the fact of why you, why you, you strayed in the first place mm-hmm. and it's just not working. It. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just not working and so now you're trying to square peg into a circle hole and it's yeah. just not working you're trying to operate in the same spaces that you were before and you guys aren't ready to be at those same spaces hoping, that you were hoping before. for a new result you're gonna get the same result definition of insanity if i don't if i don't change the behavior i'm gonna get the same outcome mm-hmm. so every single time if, if there was an offense with a particular behavior in order to prevent the offense from happening again, I have to change the behavior. And I tell uh-huh. my clients this all the time. They're like, well, you just wanted me to give blind trust. I said, I would never tell you to give blind trust. I want you to give calculated trust. That's foolish. I want you to but- calculate how much trust does this, has this person shown that they can handle? It might be yeah, 1%. I mean- it might be 2%. It might be 100%. But you have to be the determin the determinant of that. The other person doesn't get to determine how much trust you give them. And and that's something I, I I tell my clients all the time is that no one, no one, deserves blind trust and faith without exhibiting that they can that they are that they can but be they responsible can with it. Yeah. Like we will just blankly write somebody a check and just trust that some, I don't trust nobody that much outside of my parents who gave birth to me. I don't trust nobody that much in God himself. I ain't trust nobody that much where I'm just going to blanketly just trust you that you're no. Cause for most of us, what we have to understand is human beings as, as human beings, we all are inherently self-serving. Mm-hmm. We all have a propensity for selfishness. And when you operate with that mindset of, People are, you know, push comes to shove, people are going to do what's in their best interest. Not everyone is going to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. They're going Mm -hmm. to do what's in their best interest. And so when you operate in that space of people are going to do what's in their best interest, if if push comes to shove, you're not surprised when it happens. You know how to move with people. Yeah. When the, when the, when the, when the pushing and shoving takes off, you know what most people are going to do. The problem is we tend to our expectations versus reality are not in alignment. Mm -mm. You know, reality is here. Our expectations of most everyone else is here. So you're operating from the mindset. That's why you get hurt. Um, You're operating from the mindset of just because I wouldn't do it to you. You, you shouldn't do it to me. And my man, my man, Nipsey Hussle said it best. Don't expect you from other people. 
Yeah, you, you, even you expecting you from other people just because something makes sense to you does not mean it makes sense to someone else or that it has to make sense the same way. That's the same that I started saying. Like, just because exactly, just because it doesn't make sense to me doesn't mean it doesn't make sense. You could have done that and that made sense to you, but I could think that it's something is completely nonsense. It's not, it's not sensible, right? So I have to operate from the premise of it had to make sense in their mind. That's why they did it. Mm-hmm. Even though it doesn't make sense to me. Now, I have one or two options. I could say, oh, that's stupid and keep it pushing. Or I could sit a while and say, help me understand how that made sense to you. Let me let me try to understand it from your point of view. And that there, my friends, is called empathy. Mm-hmm. When I yeah. get down on someone else's level and try to see the world from their lens, that's empathy. And that mm-hmm. that breeds a beautiful space for you to have compassion and forgiveness right i i think i think people think about all these hard things these hurtful things if somebody did that to me i would never ever forgive them right i remember um i got pregnant with my first baby and my child's father left me at the hospital everybody would probably think what oh my gosh that's just the worst thing ever ah he is just a dog he is dirty and i didn't think of those things was i hurt yeah i was hurt because i was like dang you really just left me here by myself like that's crazy again that's not something that i would have done if if the shoe were on the other foot and I had the opportunity to leave you, I definitely would have wouldn't have done that. So it's hard for me to fathom that about you. And up until this point, you didn't display that type of behavior. So this is confusing based off of the behavior that you displayed before. So when it was time for us to break up, right, a lot of it was like, Well, you must hate me. I was just like, I don't hate you, actually. Mm-hmm. I understand that you and I are not compatible and the things that you value don't align with the things that I value. So therefore we don't make a good couple. And he was just like, well, I just think that that's crazy. It's like, nah, it just is what it is. Like it's, it's what it is. I gotta, I gotta do what's best for me. You gotta do what's best for you. And, and that is, and that is a prime example of, what forgiveness should look like, you know, being able to do what's best for you in that moment in order to allow yourself to heal and allow yourself to be the best version of yourself because holding on to certain things, holding and, and it's limiting you to only operating in one particular space, one particular, you know, realm of reality, which is one of pain and one of resentment, one of vengeance, one of, of stunted growth. And Mm -hmm. for a lot of us, we have these barriers, you know, for forgiveness, such as the fear of being hurt again. A lot Mm -hmm. of us, we get locked into this thing of if, 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 you know, if I, if I, if I give this person forgiveness, they might hurt me again or they might do it again. Um, You're right. They might. They might. But again, they might not. Who knows? You won't. Nothing, nothing, nothing venture, nothing gained. And you Um, can set healthy boundaries to make sure that, hey, there are harder consequences if you do this again. Yep. Um, Another one is a lack of an apology. Sometimes you're never going to get an apology. That's okay. I'm so glad you said that. You are not owed that. Just like you're not owed forgiveness or owed to give forgiveness, you are not owed an apology. Are you deserving of an apology? Heck yeah. Yes. You're deserving of that trash, but you're not owed that. Someone doesn't owe you an apology, Mm -hmm. right? Because you might not get it. You can't live your life or die on some hill because they never apologize to me. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm not losing sleep over someone who lacks accountability. Cause that's what it is. A person who doesn't want to apologize for wrongdoing, they lack accountability. And that there, my friend shows me, I don't want to reconcile with you. You're not a person who I desire to have in my close circle. Yep. So you've chosen the fate of our relationship with, with that offense. Cause now I can't, and I can't level with you. I can't have a conversation with you. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. I think that for a lot of us, we, we get, we get caught up on, you know, being hurt again. We get caught up on the lack of an apology. And then we also get caught up on what we feel as an injustice where mm-hmm. we struggle with the idea of, 
this person getting off scot free because I gave them because I I'm giving extending forgiveness to them. And I mean, yeah. again, you know, like like Unique said, I mean, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, again, it, it, it may or may not shake out in your favor. But as I tell my clients all the time, don't worry about stuff you have no control over. Focus on what you can control. What you the can key. control is you you learning from this, you know, because by you learning from this, you develop the resilience, you develop mm -hmm. the growth, you develop the mm -hmm. the the emotional Inside. intelligence, the insight, um, the emotional regularity to know how to operate in that space with that particular person Come or on, that particular or those particular people. people moving forward. Yeah. So yeah. if you steal from me, hey, you got it. But guess nah. what? I'm going to move differently with you. Anybody going anybody gonna steal from me like that again? Boy. Yeah. Exactly. You I won't leave you nothing might, around you. You might lie. So that mm -hmm. so then the person doesn't get off scot free. That's what I wanted to say. If we really think about it, a person doesn't get off scot free. Because yeah. now you've changed the dynamic of our connection. Exactly. If, if you, there is if a connection. If you hurt me, right. If you hurt me, you no longer get the benefit of operating in the space that we had prior to you hurting me. Mm -hmm. Because now I've seen a side of you that's different. I, I, I've just unlocked a new level of you. So now it would be crazy of me to say, oh, no, again, that's that that's that irrational thinking. Oh, no, they're not that person. They're they're the alternate person that I've created in my mind. Right. We got to stop thinking that people are perfect. People are people and people make mistakes. People. Absolutely. And I mean, people fail they 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 do the wrong things that that's who people they come are. up short they come up short because why we're human that's what humans do that we're we, not machines we are inherently flawed and yeah, and that's where as i said machine. before we're beautifully flawed we're not a machine so if i if i approach you that way because i'll hear people talk about well, that means i'm not gonna have any expectations and that's not realistic no it's not and and, and that's where you as i said to before have expectations of people our expectations versus what's what's real are not in alignment. When you start right. to move your expectations back in alignment with what's real and 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 what's actually actual factual, you will find yourself not being disappointed. You will find yourself not being hurt. You will find yourself not being in compromised positions. You will find yourself seeing seeing the world in a much more clear state versus mm -hmm. through rose tinted glasses and. Mm -hmm. It, it just allows you to be able to maneuver and to be able to operate around other people and and certain individuals, you know, better. Yeah, I think and that have, it's just healthier. It's, you're healthier. You're happier. You are able to function at a more optimal level because mm -hmm. I am investing and in, and in returning. I'm investing what I can and returning on that investment in the same regard. Or you know, okay, look, I'm only I'm only offering pennies here, and I'm mm -hmm. these are really I'm really just donating in yep. this space because sometimes we have those people in our lives that we recognize I'm in their life for benefit for a reason. Yeah, my my benefit in them is just seeing their growth, but it is not to receive anything from them outside of just the pure altruistic fact i was able to do some good for somebody in need right and exactly. I, that's not talking about money you, you know you got those loved ones that always need something whether it's a listening ear to complain to um always need some type of advice always need somebody to keep their kids always need some money now do you have to set healthy boundaries with those jokers absolutely because the, the fact that they're still in this mess probably indicates they have poor boundaries if they keep getting their self in, in bind. But you recognize, all right, this is not the person that I'm going to gain from. I'm not mm -hmm. going I, I that is not my place in this person's life. My place in this person's life is to pour into their cup. It's, it's yep. a one-way pour. It ain't coming back. You know, unless God himself gives it, but it ain't coming back from them. I mean, I think that for for a lot of us, we have to kind of take a step back sometimes and be willing to learn how to approach forgiveness. I think that for a lot of us, we are blanketly all taught the same thing when it comes to forgiveness, which is why a lot of us do it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. um, we're all taught, treat people the way you want to be treated. 
you know, but everyone operates differently. So how I'd want to be treated may not be how you want to be treated. So, you know, when it comes to that's where, as I said before, about this particular topic being humorous, when you hear people talk about it on social media, people never delve into what it looks like and how to approach Mm -hmm. it. So Mm -hmm. when you are doing, when you are looking at forgiving someone, you have to number one, acknowledge that you feel some type of way. You were hurt. You feel some type of way that you're hurt, that your your feelings was hurt. They disrespected you because again, when you seek to, I guess, address the issue, how are you going to address the issue if you can't even acknowledge that you're hurt in the first place Mm -hmm. or you feel some type of way? And what hurt you? I think people are like, oh, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. But what hurt you? What about it was hurtful? Was it just that you were embarrassed? Because that's a different, that's a different level. That's a you thing. If you get, if you're embarrassed, I'm going to just be honest. I ain't trying to do a dig, but that's really a personal thing if you're embarrassed Mm -hmm. by something. Because that's your own feelings. Nobody controls your feelings. You can choose not to be embarrassed or to be embarrassed. Nobody can make you feel embarrassed. Right? Take it from me, because maybe I'm just a jackass. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, you got to choose whether or not you're going to feel embarrassed. But if someone does something that is just like, yo, you were intentionally being harmful to me, then I mm-hmm. can bring that up to your attention. Quick story about yeah. just this phases. So I'm sitting in, I'm in graduate school. Raja, I know. No, I'm in undergrad. So Raja knows I'm a jackass to my core. I'm a I'm a kind hearted jackass though. Let's just be honest. If you push me to jackassery, it's really your fault. But I digress. So we had this, I was in Spanish class. We had this tutor. I think I had my head down on the desk or something because as as Raja, I was telling him a little earlier today, I just don't do well with people who are poor planners and who are ditzy like that that type of thing just don't well work well with me so this particular ta she she didn't have command of the classroom and i guess i saw her as more of like weak sauce right so she's like all right i'm gonna just put my head down for a quick second i know the material that she's talking about um and then at one point i didn't know so she's like but i wasn't understanding i was like i'm not getting it. i'm gonna just have to read my book on my own and get this later so this particular teacher calls herself trying to embarrass me and make an example out of me. I don't know why she did that because I, I'm a jackass, a kind-hearted jackass. So I politely told her, "Oh, I don't know the answer to that." She was like, "No, you need what's the answer?" I was just like, "Nah, I don't, I don't know." I, and so I'm, I'm just chill. I, I don't know the answer to that. So she says, well, I want you to go to the board and write out what you think the answer is. So in my best handwriting, and I have some beautiful handwriting to add. It's very calligraphic. That's a word. Um, While well, I just wrote in some beautiful cursive that day, I do not know. Sat down, folded my hands on the desk and smiled at her. Now, she was of lighter hue, so her face started to turn as red as my shirt, and she's uh, 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 does anyone else know the answer? She was trying to embarrass me because she thought I wasn't paying attention, but I chose not to be embarrassed, and yet decided to give her the choice if she wanted to be embarrassed or not, and it seems like she took me up on my offer. So, embarrassment is a choice. That's number Mm -hmm. one. But you got to decide, okay, how did this make me feel? Now, the thing that it did make me feel was um, it made me feel disrespected because I gave this woman a clear answer. And because it wasn't the answer she did not, it wasn't an answer that she liked, she thought that she was going to pick on me. Newsflash, I'm not the one or the two. Or the three. Okay? Baby, I ain't none of them. Just just count me at zero because I ain't (laughs) it tag somebody else and that's what she had to do but when you're talking about the phases of forgiveness that first phase is the uncovering phase what actually happened what was the offense why do i feel this way why am i in my chest how did you wrong me and these aren't questions you got to ask them child you know how they wronged you sit with yourself Mm -hmm. and say self and yourself gonna say hmm 
And you're going to say, Self, what happened to us? <laughs> now, if a voice come back that don't sound like you, baby, you got schizophrenia. But other than that, <laughs> that voice better come back like yours. Okay? <laughs> that's that's the first thing. If that voice come back like anybody else, either you high or you're schizophrenic or both. So just, you heard it from me first, Buki. So I mean that I mean you do have to be able to do that. You have to be able to do that. You have to be able to empathize with the other person. Try to understand well, got, why the other Raja, person did whatever they yet. did. You can't get there yet. You can't get there. How you yet. figure you can't? That's the end. That's the end. That's once. That's once you didn't did all of the stuff. You got to uncover. First of all, before you make it about them, you got to you got to figure out about you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then you I, figure out what's about you, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then you start to say, all right, so this what happened, right? Why did that stink? Why does stink do that? We not gonna, we why not. They, why they gotta be stink? Because when you cutting up, you stink, stink, not stink. <laughs> why you do that? So then you say, you know what? Stink been going through a lot. Their parents ain't raised them. They was raised in the jungle. They ain't got no home training, no scruples, no morals. Right? They just downright dirty. Bless their heart. See, that's the southerner in me. When you say bless their heart, ah, you're, you're not a baby. southerner. Then. <laughs> No. Bless their heart. You are not a southern. <laughs> I'm not, but when the, I understand what y'all mean when y'all say bless somebody heart, that is not a bidding of well doing. It's not. So that's why I understand it. I learned that with the quickness. So that's why you got to throw a little bless their heart on top of stink. All right, so stink, stink really. <sighs> okay. I'm right now. This is where you get to choose if you will or won't forgive. Mm -hmm. After you didn't weed it through all of that, you got to decide do I want to forgive Stink? Because mm -hmm. you have a choice. And you, you have a like, choice. Nah, not doing it. I'm taking this to my grave and I'm going to just let it slow burn. But see, you, you also have to. I don't recommend it. <laughs> you, you also have to let go of the resentment, too. I feel like when you. <clears throat> but that's in the decision phase, Raji. Mm -hmm. That's that's where you're deciding, right? What what am I gonna do? Because some people like a little slow burn. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 not a slow burner. I have um indigestion, and so if it don't come with an anti acid, I don't want it. So if my forgiveness, if like forgiveness is like an anti acid for me in in the realm of emotion, if if it ain't gonna put out the fire. Then I just can't have. I can't be burning up in my chest about something. You ever had heartburn? See, you ain't never been pregnant. That's not your struggle. But I've been pregnant before, baby. In pregnancy, heartburn. That shit's for the bird. You hear me? <laughs> it's for the birds. You be wanting to fight when your chest. It's just be feeling like it's just coming up. And see, I'm gonna tell you another burn. That that private summer burn. Child, unforgiveness is like both of them. Times it's 10. like both of them. It's like the menopause heat rise. You know how them the older women be talking about like a private summer. See, Roger, you men don't have to worry about this. But for all my girls who are like thirty plus, y'all know and who have periods after thirty, baby, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's that heat where you start stripping down and you still hot. Child. I woke up one time. I was had this is a this is a sidebar. I woke up one day, mind you. I live I lived in an apartment at the time. I ain't had no ceiling fan, but I was having a I was having a private summer. Woke up out my sleep. My my boyfriend at the time was my husband, and so I jumped up. No, we may have been married, and I said, "Who cut the fan off?" <laughs> you think we don't have no fan? The next day we had a fan. The next day, I had a fan in my house. He said, oh, no. She ain't going to jump up talking crazy to me. Talking about who cut the fan off. That is unforgiveness times 10. When you feel like you in the middle of a hot flash and somebody turned the fan off and the AC off and they threw your tail in the turtleneck. Baby, I don't want it. I don't want it. I just, I don't want a turtleneck on during a private summer. Yeah. You're going to die. So yeah, I agree with that. that though, Raj. I, that, I definitely agree with that. That's the second part of it. You got to decide if you're ready. That's why people got to take their time. Mm -hmm. Because 
this is the thing, right? Some people rush. They try to do it this way. They try to do, all right, I'm going to forgive first. And then they try to figure out what actually happened second. You got to figure out what happened first so you know what the heck you forgiven or what you're not forgiven. Exactly. Right? So then, then you can say, because remember, forgiveness is letting go of the resentment. You can't hold on to resentment and say you're forgiven. That's the, that's the opposite of what forgiveness is. That's called Absolutely. just resentment and unforgiveness. That's, so well, no, that, that's, choose... called, that's called planning vengeance. That's what that's called. Yeah, yeah. If you just, well, some people are resentful and they don't plan vengeance. Right? They're just, that's, that's unforgiveness. All of that. Vengeance, resent, anger, mad, wrath. thinking, wrath loathing all of that's a part of unforgiveness so when you're thinking of <clears throat> forgiveness right you have to literally say okay this this is what it entails am i at a place where i'm ready to do that now you might say no i'm not I, i'm not emotionally mature enough to let it go yet and that's yeah. fair and that's okay. You're you going to be in a private summer and like with like increased the heartburn until you do. I And see what I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that everyone has to reach forgiveness at their own speed. You know, mm-hmm. what, what, what works for me may not work for you. And so for a lot of us, and this is where, as I said before, like with the social media, you know, you know, this social media therapy that everyone likes to do. We talk about forgiveness without, without talking about the steps that go into it. And I think that like when, when you talk about extending grace and and forgiveness Mm -hmm. to everybody for everything, we never talk about how it has to happen at its own time. You -hmm. know, you, it may take, it may take a couple of days. It may take a couple of months. It may take a few years, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. excuse me, everyone is different. And you should only move into forgiveness when you are truly and fully ready to move into each step of forgiveness. Because if Mm -hmm. not, you are dooming yourself to relive the pain and the hurt over and over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. If you jump into something, it's no different than if you break your leg. You break your leg and you do not take the the proper time to rehab and allow your leg to recuperate. You go out there and try running again, you're going to break your leg again. And it's going to be worse because... You weren't re- you weren't supposed to be doing that in the first place. It's gonna yeah, it's gonna be worse than, than you broke it the first time. Yeah, and yeah. you have people who will do that. You'll see athletes go out and re aggravate an uh, an existing injury because they mm-hmm. tried to come back too fast instead of yep. taking the proper time and prioritizing themselves. Now you you've heard me prioritize speak about this in- and wellness. Yes, prioritize the healing and the wellness, and then also prioritize choosing yourself. And you yeah, know, I've talked about this. how you got in that space. Exactly. Please talk about, because, please talk about that. Please talk about how, cause some be, people because some people act like they don't know how they got where they got. How did that happen? And, 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 and that's, and, and that's where, you know, for me, you know, like I've spoken about this in the episode we did about dysfunctional behavior, where we talked about Risa Tisa, where she acknowledged, yeah, I made poor choices, you know, but <laughs> as I said in the episode, she was, you know, she was so, so focused on being chosen. She didn't choose herself. And so when you are operating, and this is where, as I, I t- as, as a man and as a Christian, as, as a provider, I tell people all the time, it's very important that you are moving with intention and purpose mm-hmm. by moving in, it, in with intention and purpose. There are certain things that you, you will never find in your path because it does not align with your intention and purpose. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, by choosing you, you are constantly doing an inventory of where, where you could have been better, where you came up short, and what you could have done different. You are constantly doing that. Mm-hmm. I do that as a provider all the time. Like whenever I have a therapy session with a client and things become contentious about certain topics, after that session, I will do a debrief with myself. And mm-hmm. what could I have said differently? How could I have conveyed the message differently? What could I have done differently to make it resonate with the client more effectively? Mm-hmm. For mm-hmm. a lot of us, we don't do that with ourselves. We don't mm-hmm. take the time to analyze how I got here in the first place. And so mm-hmm. by, by analyzing how you got here in the first place and then actually taking ownership for the part that you may have played in things, you are allowing yourself to not make that same choice moving forward. Because right. something stops being a mistake after the first or second time. I'll the give first you time. 
no, no, no. You, you know, you get once because you had a little knowledge. Now you can mm -hmm. make a brand new mistake. You can't make the same exact mistake twice. Yeah. If I yeah, stub I my that. if I stub my toe on a rock because I kick it. If I stub if I come back and I kick it again, mm -hmm. I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah, that's true. So the I, second seen, time is a choice. I I have seen that happen where. You know, like when I used to watch Mari, po Mari Povich and I watched, used to watch Jerry Springer, you'd have somebody be up there. They cheated 15 times. It was a mistake. Bruh, that ain't a mistake. That's a life That's a lifestyle choice. <laughs> it's not a mistake. Just... I, I think that for a lot of us, <laughs> by, by <laughs> I think that by a lot of us not taking the time to reevaluate the decisions that we make, we don't give ourselves forgiveness forgiveness is a two-way street the same way you're extending forgiveness to other people sometimes you have to extend forgiveness to yourself as well yeah you yeah. have to forgive yourself for putting yourself in certain situations yeah for Child, i'm sorry we did that that's why i'd say you gotta talk to yourself yeah so and yourself gonna say huh <laughs> now if it sounds like somebody <laughs> else sound like somebody else you might then be you, gotta, you might be having some problems you just call one of us okay pookie because you got another issue on your hands mm -hmm. but i think that for for a lot of us you know we do not extend that same forgiveness that same level of forgive, forgiveness no we don't that we extend we're, to other people we're harsh and critical right we, we are got that we are harder on ourselves than we are to other people and or, i see that a lot lenient, or too lenient because some yeah, people too lenient. Think they're not hard and they need to be a little tougher but but Raj, before we go any further i want to cover some other steps and maybe you could post this i'm going to just say the website shout out to therapist aid if you want to know some things that you can some ways that you can work on some of the stuff you talk to your therapist about outside of therapy they cover mm -hmm. a breadth of topics um instead of going to TikTok, facebook and instagram check out therapist right. aid it is written by doctors and other mental health professionals who have studied their craft for many years um, and they print re they provide resources for people who want to grow in particular social emotional and psychological areas so that's where some of the stuff that we're talking about today is coming from especially on my end but i wanted to go over um the other two phases that they have and that's the work phase and the deepening phase so we talked about the uncovering and the decision phase mm -hmm. i want to talk about the work phase and the deepening phase and this is where raja was talking about how being able to understand the person from their perspective and why they did what they did i think that is very valuable um and i think this what comes to mind is sexual abuse or trauma a lot of times people feel like well i could never abuse my i mean i could never forgive my abuser i could never forgive somebody who hurt me in that way well going through a, again forgiveness so i'm sorry if that happened that is something that requires a lot of inner work and i think work with a healthcare professional a mental health care professional to process through the trauma and really unpack the magnitude of what happened in that scenario once you have done that work, the other work starts in just understanding that person was not coming from a safe space. They just weren't. The person who hurt me, the person who was able to commit this heinous act against me, they, they didn't understand what they were doing. And if they did understand what they're doing, I'm going to say it now. This is not a clinical term. This is a very unique glasses off term. They're a sicko right? Something's wrong with them. Nobody wakes up and says, today's a good day to hurt somebody unless mm -hmm. they have a mental health illness. And, and Raja and I have had, I will say the pleasure of working with people who do have illnesses, severe mental illness, where for some of them, that is their, you know, unhealthy line of processing or thinking. And so in that case, I'm going to have different expectations for a person who has a severe mental illness than I would for somebody who doesn't exhibit a severe mental illness. But I'm still, my expectations, this is where that reality, the work phase is when that reality meets the expectation. If this person is rude, nasty, and they ain't got it all together, A, it doesn't make what they did right. However, it does help me to understand why they did what they did. And it gives me the opportunity to choose if I'm going to 
put myself in that environment with them again. Some people don't, you don't just don't deserve to be back in your space. Y'all know mm-hmm. I tell y'all all the time, everybody doesn't deserve every version of you. The full you, everybody that's in your life does not deserve your 100%. So if you see that this person cannot handle that, you cannot give it. To keep giving that is you harming you. Not right? choosing and you. That becomes a personal problem. So when this, when you start to go through the work phase, this also begins the reconciliation phase because you're kind of breaking down those defenses to say, I'm not doing the work of reconciliation, but I am saying there is an open door if you want to. Mm-hmm. But, but here are the rules for if you decide to do it. Absolutely. If you decide to re-engage with me, this is what this is going to look like. These are the steps that are going to have to be taken. These are the precautions that are now in place to prevent there from being hurt in the future. Mm-hmm. If you choose not to do those things, then it's not on you, the forgiver. It's on the offender. If they choose not to get in line, you, you have clean hands at that point. Because you said, look, I, I told you what it was. So if you mm-hmm. come over here and cut up and you get cut off, that's on you, big fella. They ain't got yep. nothing to do with me, right? And then mm-hmm. when you move on to that next phase, right, the the deepening phase, this is why I said when, you, when there has been hurt, you can't stay at the same level. You can't. You gotta, it's got to be another level in that thing. So the deepening phase says, okay. Not only have I unlocked a new part of me, but now I unlocked a new part of you. And I want to tread in a way that shows you I understand where we are. And I want to remain in your your favorable graces. I don't want to say good graces, your favorable graces. Right? I don't want to do things that are going to be hurtful to you. I don't want to do things that are going to damage our relationship. And that's where you get to build with that person again in the deep mm-hmm. phase where you get to say, you know, that experience really helped me open my eyes that maybe I was a little naive, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe I was a little too trusting. Maybe I had unrealistic expectations of people. And so now I've had to adjust my lens. So that's growth for you. It builds the growth with that person to say, look, hey, you were not as in tuned emotionally as you probably thought you were. So now they have an opportunity to be more in tune with how they behave in certain situations. You have an opportunity to be more assertive about your needs and wants. It's a beautiful situation for everybody involved. But if you don't do the other steps, trying to get to the deepening phase will usually end up getting you hurt and you'll start doing things like uh, pardoning where it should have just been, you know what, I'm forgiving you and I'm I'm allowing there to be a natural progression of reconciliation based off of some reestablished or reactive boundaries. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you have to do that, though. I think that, as I said before, you, for, for a lot of us, what tends to happen is we, we're all taught the same thing about, about, about forgiveness. Say you're sorry and move on. You know, times have changed. People have changed. Times was never that we're, way. People just were saying that mess. We're, we, are, we, are more, we are more in tune and more in touch with our emotions and our feelings. People are now aware of, I feel a certain way because dot, dot, dot. I think the way I think because dot, dot, dot. And so mm-hmm. the way that we were taught when we were children is when you wrong somebody, you, for, you, you say you're sorry and then all's forgiven and you just move on. That's not how that works anymore. And so, Y'all hug and so, back friends. <laughs> no. I mean, and so, you know, again, rushing, rushing into forgiveness, rushing into reconciliation, r- rushing back into engaging with people in the same way that you engaged with them before, before, before a, a hurt or a wrong occurred is a recipe for disaster. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. At some point in time, we have to start making strong, rational, lucid, coherent decisions and saying, hey, calamity and chaos has no place in my life. And so Mm -hmm. I forgive you. But as you said, we don't have to operate in the same space that we did before. I can love you from a distance. I can interact with you from a distance. I can interact with you through this door or on the other side of this window. But 
in regards to us moving in the moving and jiving and kicking it in the same spaces that we did before, that may or may not happen ever again. Now, time does heal most wounds. I'm not going to sit here and say all wounds, but it does heal most wounds. It can heal all and, of them. It, it doesn't mean that it won't leave a scar. And I think that's what people yeah. think. Healing means it won't leave a scar. Time will heal the wound. It mm -hmm. just will leave a, it may leave a scar. And I think that for, for a lot of us, we, we just, you know, we just operate with this, this malaligned ideation of what it means to give somebody forgiveness. You know, we think that the forgiveness is, is for them. It's not, it's for you as the person, as the person that was wronged, it's for you to be able to free yourself of the pain, the hurt, mm -hmm. the resentment, the negative emotions associated with it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it also does not mean that you are just allowing the person to move around freely in your life. Mm -hmm. There are, there have been plenty of people and I, and I tell people this all the time, you know, RJ is extremely petty. When people talk about somebody mm -hmm. going low, you go low, I go to hell and I'm going to come up with a, with a, with a, with a fiery uppercut, you know, but what I've had to learn. Do you see as why a we're friends? Do you see why we're friends? <laughs> you have kind, kind jackass and, Petty, petty. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm the pettiest. And so, what I had to recognize <laughs> as someone who is aware of my pettiness is that you know holding on to those feelings of anger, those feelings of animosity, those feelings of I got to get my lick back. What mm -hmm. does that do for you? It doesn't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. You spend more time and more effort and more energy being upset at somebody while I'm they're not even thinking about you no more. I'm going to tell you what it does to you. It stunts your healing. Forgiveness it is does. the first step in Forgiveness is the first step in healing. When you, when you give someone forgiveness, that is the first step you take in moving past and healing from what happened. We talked about if you broke an arm, right? Mm -hmm. The first part is saying, how did I break my arm? All right, let's figure out the damage done. Wrap it up in a cast. The cat, getting the cast on is the first step to healing. If you don't do that, then you're still going to be in the same, a, a year from now, the bones may fuse back together, but would it, would it be healed? Are you still going to have the same level of functionality? Nah, because you didn't take the proper first step. So will you move on from whatever hurt it is? Possibly. Yeah. There's a great chance you can move on from the hurts that are done to you, but will you emotionally be in a healed space where there's not still evidence of that injury? No, but yeah, I, I, I agree with that. The thing, the thing that for most of us, like I said, like I, like I said before, for most of us, the thing that we have to do is we have to take the time. We have to take the time, move at our own speed. Don't operate from a place of not being healed. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot, especially in nowadays, you see that across the full spectrum of, of someone's life where they will operate in different spaces, operate in different, different, different places and not operate from a place that is of healing and growth. In order to even attempt to offer, you know, forgiveness to someone or extend forgiveness to someone, you have to operate from a place of you are healed. If you are still hurt, if you are still bothered, if you still feel some type of way about whatever happened or what would have, whatever transpired or whatever was said, you're not healed. For me, when I offer you, when I offer you forgiveness, I am, I am, I, I, you know, there's, there's a level of, of unbothered. I call it the Omarion unbothered because when they asked Omarion about, uh, the mother of his children dating his former bandmate, my man sat there and said with a straight face, I don't feel no types of way. I want to be that level of unbothered. Yeah. Like two people that I know of more than anybody else in this world I, that are, are now together behind my back. I want to be that level unbothered. And well, so it's because it's because he recognized I don't own either of them. I'm just in control of me. I don't control my child's mother. Neither mm -hmm. do I control my bandmate. And when you allow yourself the, the ability, <clears throat> I can only control what I can control, and that is me. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're unbothered by so much. Mm -hmm. You are free. Things just you you're free because you're like, I mean, people gonna make their choice. Now, did mm -hmm. he say that he that he did, did did he say, Oh, I have the same level of trust for them? Probably not. Nope. They didn't ask him that in the interview. Because mm -hmm. had they asked him that, he probably said, 
<laughs> Hell no. Nah. I don't trust him the same way. Nope. But when they asked him how he felt about it, he was like, I don't feel no types of way. He's like, I'm, I'm, I don't feel no types of way. And I mean, that is what, when you get to the point to where you, that is how you know that you are ready to offer forgiveness to someone when you are that level of unbothered. You know, and, and but that's, that's if how you, you know you have the slightest, the journey. slightest bit. Yes. You know, if you have the slightest bit, the slightest twinge of resentment or pain or animosity or issues, you're not ready. And to do something that you're not ready for is to set yourself up for a disaster, is to set yourself up to be reintroduced to the pain all over again, is to well, set yeah. yourself up to be, you know, back in the same spot you were before you felt that you were ready to be. To, to you're, in the, you're still in that and that's uncovering where, phase. You're still in that first phase mm -hmm. of trying to figure out what what is the extent of the hurt. That's why I say you cannot mm -hmm. rush past that. That that phase might take some time. It may take years. It may take separating from the person to figure out how do I actually feel. Exactly. And I think that, again, like when it comes down to it, everyone moves at their own pace. Everyone moves at their own speed. But it's important that you sit down and as as therapists, we would be remiss in not telling you to sit down and unpack your emotions. Mm -hmm. Too many times we don't unpack our emotions. We don't address our emotions. We just stuff them down. And the mm. problem with trying to stuff 50 pounds of dog food into a five pound Ziploc bag is eventually the stuff starts coming out the bag. And so it's mm -hmm. important that you are, as you are putting things in, you are taking things out. Well, some people believe in stuff in their stuff in other people's face. So there's that. Yeah, there, there's that too. There, there's that as well. And, and, it, and it's just one of those things where, as I said before, you know, for, for, for us as providers, we would be remiss in not telling you the importance of being able to talk about your emotions. Sometimes you might have to seek a professional like Unique or I. Sometimes you may have to seek a, uh, somebody that you, you know, you, that you look up to a mentor or somebody that, you know, provides you with, that you can trust. Yes, Keyword gone trust. Through a sim gone through a similar experience. Exactly. Because the thing is, you know, and, sometimes. And they, and they have gotten out of it. Do not go yes. to people who are still in it. They've gotten out of it. They've, They've given forgiveness. They're on the other side. They're in that deepening phase. That's who you want to go to. You don't need nobody who's still in that thing. Exactly. At that point, and, it's a support group. And I think support groups are good, but mm -hmm. they should have a facilitator. So mm -hmm. two people who both in the same problem, y'all just A lot of times just can't really, can't, you, you, you can't, and I, and I have that conversation with people all the time. Someone who's in the same point as you in the hole can't help you get out the hole. Right. Like somebody got to be out the hole to throw the rope back some, down into some, the hole to get you out. got to be out. Yep. So <clears throat> we're going to end the conversation there. This is Try Not to Think It signing out. I'm RJ. I'm Unique. And if you like what you heard, you like what you saw, uh, we ask that you like, share, subscribe, turn the notifications on because you don't want to miss any of the episodes. We are some great looking people. Um, the faces, the antics. Um, you'll miss any of that if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel. We can be found on YouTube. Try not to overthink it. Um, if you would like to listen to the podcast instead of watch the podcast, I don't know why you would, because again, do we're both. some very good looking people. Do both of them. Do do both. You know, do you know also uh follow us on 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 our social medias on the Instagram as well as the TikTok. The links will be down below. Um, but we can be found and listened to on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible. Anchor, pretty much anywhere you can get your audio files, we can be located. But this is us signing out, and we will catch you next time. Peace.